Python 3 Exceptions and Files Exceptions You have already seen exceptions in previous code. They occur when something goes wrong due to correct, incorrect code or input. When an exception occurs, the program immediately stops. The following code produces the zero division error exception by trying to divide 7 by 0. Num1 equals 7, num2 equals 0. Print parentheses num1 divided by num2. The result is zero division error colon division by zero. What is an exception? It's an event that occurs due to an incorrect code or input. Different exceptions are raised for different reasons. Common exceptions would be the import error colon an import fails, index error colon a list is indexed with an out of range number, a name error colon an unknown variable is used, syntax error colon the code can't be parsed properly, type error colon a function is called on a value of an inappropriate type, and value error colon a function is called on a value of the correct type but with an inappropriate value. Python has several other built-in exceptions such as zero division error and OS error. Third-party libraries also often define their own exceptions. Which exception is raised by this code? Print the string 7 plus the number 4. That would be the type error. Exception handling. To handle exceptions and to call code when an exception occurs, you can use a try except statement. The try block contains code that might throw an exception. If that exception occurs, the code in the try block stops being executed and the code in the accept block is run. If no error occurs, the code in the accept block doesn't run. For example, try colon num1 equals 7, num2 equals 0, print parentheses num1 divided by num2, and print the string done calculation. Accept zero division error colon print the string an error occurred and print the string due to zero division. In this case num1 divided by num2 is 7 divided by 0 which is a zero division error. So the result is this day the uh, printout of an error occurred and due to zero division prints out as well. In the code above, the accept statement defines the type of exception to handle, in our case, the zero division error. What is the output of this code? Try colon variable equals 10, print parentheses 10 divided by 2. Accept zero division error colon print the string error. Lastly, we have print the string finished. And print the string finished is not indented, so it does not belong to the uh, zero division error exception. So what you will get is 10 divided by 2, which is a 5. And because you're doing division, you have to give it a float result. So not just 5, but 5.0. And since there was no exception, we ignore the zero division uh, error exception. So we do not print error, we just print finished. So 5.0 and finished or what we will see. A try statement can have multiple different accept blocks to handle different exceptions. Multiple exceptions can also be put into a single accept block using parentheses to have the accept block handle all of them. So here we have try colon variable equals 10 print parentheses variable plus the string hello and print parentheses variable divided by 2. Well when we have variable plus hello Variable is given the value of 10, so it's numeric. And we're trying to add a number with a string. We can't do that, so that's a type error. Um, variable divided by 2 is fine, however. Uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5, but because the first print is giving us a generating an error, we're going to go straight to the exception and not finish the um, 10 divided by 2 by printing out 5. It gets ignored because we're going to go straight to um, the bottom exception. The first exception, except zero mm. division error, um, is going to be ignored because we don't have a zero division error. We only have except value error, comma type error. We're actually talking about a type error, um, string data type and a numeric data type. So except parentheses value error, comma type error, colon print. The string error occurred and as you can see at the bottom the result is actually error occurred. What is the output of this code? Try colon meaning equals 42 
print parentheses meaning divided by zero. Boom, there's a zero division error. Now underneath that we have print the string the meaning of life. We are not even going to get to that part because we got an error in our code first. So we're going to go straight to accept zero division error and that is going to print out divided by zero. An accept statement without any exception specified will catch all errors. These should be used sparingly though as they can catch unexpected errors and hide programming mistakes. So you want to use it sparingly. You want to be as you want to have as many accept statements as possible so that you can really hone in and target on different types of exceptions. But they do want to show you that you can actually use a single accept statement for all. And in that um, example, they have try colon word equals the string spam print parentheses word divided by zero. Well, we have uh, a type error here because you can't take a string data type and divide. You have two things. You have divided by zero is a problem, and you also have type error. You can't uh, mathematically divide a word by a number, a string data type by a numeric. So just this single accept statement, accept colon print the string an error occurred, will happen no matter what errors occur. Exception handling is particularly useful when dealing with user input. Fill in the blanks to handle all possible exceptions. So first we have our try statement with the colon. We're going to try num1 equals input, parentheses the string, a colon. Num2 equals input, and in parentheses we have another string, uh, a colon symbol. After that we have print, parentheses, uh, float, parentheses, num1, divided by float, parentheses, num2. Then we are going to use our accept statement, except with a colon. If we have any problems, any exceptions with that code in the try block, uh, the exception will print the string invalid input. Finally, to ensure some code runs no matter what errors occur, you can use a finally statement. The finally statement is placed at the bottom of a try accept statement. Code within a finally statement always runs after execution of the code in the try and possibly in the accept blocks. Try colon print the string hello and print one divided by zero. After the try block, we have our uh, we have an accept block. Accept zero division error colon print the string divided by zero, and then we have a finally block. Finally colon print the string, this code will run no matter what. So here's the result. We have the word hello, we have the string uh, divided by zero, and we have this code will run no matter what. What is the output of this code? Try colon print one. Okay, there's no problem there. You can print a numeric one, that's no problem. Then you have accept colon print two. Well, in the try block there was no exception, so that accept block is going to be ignored. Then we have a finally block, finally colon print three. Finally is going to um, execute no matter what, so we're going to print out a one and we're going to print out a three. Uh-oh, what I do? One and three, this up here. There we go. All right, code in a finally statement even runs if an uncaught exception occurs in one of the preceding blocks. So we've got two statements in the try block. We have try colon print one, no problem there. But when we go to the next line, print 10 divided by zero, that's a problem. That is a zero division error, so it's going to go straight to the accept zero division error block, which is going to print parentheses unknown underscore var. This is causing a problem in itself because we haven't set the variable called unknown var to a value. So since we didn't create it and set it to a value, that's going to cause an exception uh, as well. We do have a finally condition here, a finally block, finally colon print the string this is executed last. Now check out how this result works. We do have print one showing first. 
then when we tried to print 10 divided by 0, that was a problem, which went straight to our zero division error exception, which created another problem because we're trying to print out the value of unknown var. We, did, we don't have a value for that. So we went straight to the finally um, block, and we printed out that string. So that's why on line 2 we have this is executed last. Then you see the zero division error popping up. Uh, division by zero. Then you see during handling of the above exception, another exception occurred in which it is followed by its own uh, colon name error. Colon name unknown var is not defined. Drag and drop from the options below to create a try except finally block. So we start off with a try, try colon print one. Next we have except colon print two. Well, we don't have any exceptions, so that's going to be ignored. Then we have finally colon print 42. Finally, blocks will always execute. So the output of this code would be a 1 and a 42. Raising exceptions. Exceptions can be raised with arguments. Wait, i got to back up a little. You can raise exceptions by using the raise statement. For example, print parentheses 1, then raise value error, and then print parentheses 2. Your result here, you get the output of 1, and then you get the output of value error. You don't get a printout of 2 because whenever you have an error in your code, it goes straight to the problem. It stops the code execution and goes straight to the exception. In this case, it gave the name of the exception but it didn't give any code. Um, it didn't give any code. It doesn't. It doesn't give any exception code. It just said raise value error. So we see a one and a value error. You need to specify the type of exception raised. Which errors occur in this code? Try colon print parentheses one divided by zero. That's a problem because because you have a zero division error there. And here's our exception to handle that particular problem, except zero division error, colon, raise value error. So because we do have a zero division error, that's going to output plus, because we use the raise keyword, we are going to um, indicate another error. It's going to be called a value error. So we have zero division error and value error. Both, both are going to show... Um, as output in our code. Exceptions can be raised with arguments that give detail about them. For example, name equals the string 1, 2, 3. Raise name error, parentheses, the string invalid name. The result for this code would be name error, colon, invalid name, because we use the raise keyword. So we basically caused an error to be produced and output in our result because name equals the string 1, 2, 3, that doesn't cause an error. That's just a code that's creating a variable with a value. But raise name error is going to give us that result that shows an error. All right, fill in the blanks to raise a value error exception if the input is negative. Okay, so we start off with num equals input, parentheses, the string, a colon. Then we have an if, if float, parentheses, num. So basically, whatever the user types in, because we're using the input keyword here, the user is going to type something in, and then the float is it's going to be cast to a float. So if float parentheses num is, let's see, if the input is negative, so that means it has to be less than zero. So we need to find the less than sign, which is where right here. So if float parentheses num less than zero colon, we want to raise, so we use the raise keyword, raise value error, and then in parentheses we have the string negative. In except blocks, the raise statement can be used without arguments to re-raise whatever exception occurred. So, for example, we have try colon num equals 5 divided by 0. Again, we know that's a problem. It's going to give us a 0 uh, by division, a division by 0 error. 
So here we have a blanket except statement, except colon, print the string, an error occurred, and then they have just the simple, just the word raise without arguments. And, the, and let's see, the raise statement could be used without arguments to re-raise whatever exception occurred. Okay. All right, so what this did was we have the single blanket exception keyword. It's just accept. No matter what error happened in the try block, we would definitely print out the string and error occurred. Now, because we use the raise keyword inside of that exception block, it's going to let us know what the particular exception was. It's going to re-raise whatever exception occurred. So it's going to let um, Python tell you what exception occurred. So down here in the result, you see an error occurred string, which you, the programmer, created. And then the zero division error colon division by zero, which Python let us know as let us know as programmers what the problem was just by using that keyword raise in the exception statement, which is a pretty good deal. Okay, can you use the raise statement outside the accept block? I don't believe you can. I think it has to be in the accept block. Oh. In accept blocks, the raise statement can be used without arguments to re-raise whatever exception occurred. Can you use the raise statement outside the accept block? Yes? Oh, okay, I guess you can. For some reason, I thought it had to be in the accept block. Hmm, because it happens to be in this accept block. It's indented. It's got the same indent indentation that print and error occurred has after the keyword except. So can you use the raise statement outside the except block? Yes. Okay, let's look at assertions now. An assertion is a sanity check that you can turn on or turn off when you have finished testing the program. An expression is tested and if the result comes up false, an exception is raised. Assertions are carried out through the use of the assert statement. Okay. So let's check out how this works. We have print, parentheses 1, assert 2 plus 2 double equals 4, and then print, parentheses 2, then assert 1 plus 1 double equals 3, print parentheses 3. As an expression is tested, if the result comes up false, an exception is raised. So let's go line by line and then look at the results right afterwards. Print 1, no problem with that statement, and as you can see, the very first line of the result code is a 1. Assert 2 plus 2 equals 4. Well, that is a true statement because 2 plus 2 actually does um, have the equality of 4. So we will print 2, which is underneath the assert statement. So assert 2 plus 2 equals 4. If that's true, we will print 2. The next assert, assert 1 plus 1 equals 3. Well, that's not a true statement, so we should not see print 3 and we actually don't. We see the output of assertion error. Programmers often place assertions at the start of a function to check for valid input and after a function call to check for valid input. So at the start of a function to check for valid input and after a function call to check valid input. Okay. What is the highest number printed by this code? Print parentheses zero. Okay, there's no problem so far, so we're going to see a print of zero. Then we have an assert statement that's going to test a condition. Assert the string H does not equal the string W. Well, that's true because the string H does not equal the string W. So after that, we have print 1. So now 1 is the highest number that's going to be printed. Next, we have assert false followed by print 2. 
Well, assert false means it's not true, so we're going to ignore print to because the assertion has to be true. In other, uh, this, the assertion has to be a true condition in order for the subsequent statements to execute. So when we have a statement that says assert false, false is the same thing as saying a false condition. The word false means false, just like if a condition's false. So we will ignore print two. The last assertion, assert true, it's the same thing as if a condition were true. The, the um, word true means true. So we will see print three executing. So three will be the highest thing that we see. And I'm full of it. Why am I full of it? Hmm. Uh, what did I figure to be wrong? Print zero works fine. Assert the string H does not equal W. So print one should be okay. Assert false, so print two should not happen. Does that mean it stops all the code as soon as something doesn't work? Let me get a hint. Huh. Okay, then one is the highest number printed. And we were able to print one because assert the string H is not equal to the string W. I guess once we got the assert false print two, everything after it is ignored. Hmm, okay. Learning. The assert can take a second argument that is passed to the assertion error raised if the assertion fails. Okay, so here we have temp equals negative 10. Assert, parentheses, temp greater than or equal to zero, comma, the string colder than absolute zero. Okay, the value of temp is negative 10. Negative 10 is not greater than or equal to zero. So the assertion condition in the parentheses is a false condition. It's a false condition, so we get an assertion error because it's false, so we do have an error here, colon. Um, because there's an error there, we have that uh, string colder than absolute zero also being output. So the second argument is passed to the assertion error if the assertion fails. The assertion temp was not uh, did fail. Temp greater than or equal to zero failed. So since it failed, we get assertion error, and because of that comma, we get to tack on colder than absolute zero after the words uh, assertion error in the colon. All right, learning uh, assertion error exceptions can be caught and handled like any other exception using the try except statement, but if not handled, this type of exception will terminate the program. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Fill in the blanks to define a function that takes one argument. Assert the argument to be positive. So I guess we have a try. Wait, let me go back. Well, I guess I can't go that far back. Fill in the blanks to define a function. Oh, we're defining a function. I'm sorry. So we want to use the def keyword because we're defining. So def, short for define. Def, my underscore func, that's the name of the function. We have one uh, parameter here, which is x. So def, my underscore func, parentheses x, colon. Assert the argument to be positive. So we have the assert keyword, assert x is greater than zero. 
well, that we, we are uh, assuming we are testing the assertion x greater than zero to make sure that it's positive because if it was less, less than zero, it would be a negative number. So if that assertion fails, we will print out um, assertion error colon the string error and then we will print whatever the value of x is whatever negative number it 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 would be all right opening files you can use python to read and write the contents of files text files are the easiest to manipulate before a file can be edited it must be opened using the open function so here we've got the code my file equals open parentheses the string file name dot dxt. The argument of the open function is the path to the file. If the file is in the same directory as the program, you can specify only its name. Otherwise, if it's in a set of folders, you have to make sure that you include the file uh, in the file's path, you include the folder names. Which function is used to access files? Open. You can specify the mode used to open a file by applying a second argument to the open function. Sending the string R means open in read mode, which is the default. Sending the string W means write mode for rewriting the contents of the file. Sending the string A means append mode for adding new content to the end of the file. Adding the string B to a mode opens it in binary mode, which is used for non-text files such as image and sound files. For example, here we have pound write mode, which again, that's a comment. Then we have the executable statement open parentheses uh, file name dot txt. That's a string. It's the name of the file, comma, the string W. So we are going to open file name dot text in write mode, which will rewrite the contents of that file. Next, we have pound read mode. We have the keyword open, and in parentheses, we have the name of the file again. So it's a string, so it's in double quotes, file name.txt, comma, the string R. So we are going to open it in read mode. We're not going to write over it at all, and we're not going to append to it. We're just going to read it. And then we have open... Uh, in parentheses, just the name, file name.txt. I guess both of those, because read mode is the default, uh, you don't have to put the R in there as a secondary uh, argument. You could just put the name of it. Lastly, we have binary write mode. So that's uh, pound binary write mode is the comment, open parentheses, file name.txt in double quotes, comma, WB. So W for write and B for binary. Drag and drop from the options below to open a file called test.bin in binary read mode. So file equals open the name, which is test.bin, and we want to open it in binary read mode. R, B. R for read and B for binary. And notice R and B are smashed together within double quotes. You don't have um, R in double quotes and another comma and B in double quotes. You have um, R and B together. So basically, there's only the name of the file, one comma, and then what mode you want to open it in. Oh, once a file has been opened and used, you should close it. This is done with the close method of the file object. So here we have file equals open parentheses file name dot text in double quotes comma w in double quotes. Then we have a comment that says do stuff to the file, which this is just not included. It's just a comment to tell you where to, to put that code. And then when you're done doing stuff to the file, um, writing over it in this case, you will use file dot close empty parentheses to close it up. We will read write content to files in the upcoming lessons. How would you close a file stored in a variable text underscore file? 
you would say text underscore file dot close empty parentheses. Okay, we've got reading files, writing files, working with files, and finally our module four quiz. The contents of a file that has been opened in text mode can be read using the read method. File equals open parentheses file name dot txt comma r, and they're both strings. Then we have cont equals file dot read empty parentheses. So we're using cont as the variable. So you're using file dot read and you're putting it into that variable called cont. Then we use our print command to print the value of cont. So you have print parentheses cont. And then finally you have mm. file dot close. Uh, file dot close empty parentheses. This will print all of the contents of the file file name dot text or file name dot txt rearrange the code to open a file read its contents print them and then close the file so the first one is we want to open the file let's put this up here on the right hand side of the uh, assignment equals we have open parentheses uh, the string test dot txt and so on the right hand side of the equals, we have that uh, directive, and then we're going to put that into um, a variable called file. Next thing we want to do after we open it is we want to read its contents. So I'm going to go with this statement. On the right hand side of the equals assignment symbol, we have file.read, empty parentheses. And we are setting that equal to the variable called cont. So that's gonna we're gonna read it. We want to print it next. So since the value of file.read is gonna go into the variable called cont, we can take the print command print and then in the parentheses put that cont. And finally we want to close the file. In which case, we're just going to say file.close. Um, because when we first opened test.txt, we set that to the variable called file. So the test.txt is being referred to with file, so therefore we can use file with a dot .close operation to close test.txt. To read only a certain amount of a file, you can provide a number as an argument to the read function. This determines the number of bytes that should be read. You can make more calls to read on the same file object to read more of the file byte by byte. With no argument, read returns the rest of the file. So let's check that out. We have file equals open parentheses, the string file name dot txt, comma the string r. So we are going to open up file name dot text in read mode, and we're going to put the value of it in a variable called file. Then when we use the print command, print parentheses file dot read parentheses 16, we are going to read 16 bytes of file name dot text. And then we have another print command, print parentheses file dot read parentheses 4. So we're going to read another four bytes of file name dot text. Then we have print parentheses file dot read another parentheses four. So we're going to read uh, print out another four bytes of file name dot text. And then we finally have uh, another print print parentheses file dot read with nothing in parentheses. So in this case, it's going to print all the rest, the all of the remaining bytes of file name dot txt. Finally, we're going to close the file with file.close and nothing in the um, parentheses. How many characters would be in each line printed by this code if one character is one byte? Okay, so file equals open parentheses, the string file name.txt, comma the string r. So we're going to open up file name.txt in read mode, and we're going to set the value of opening this to the variable called file. 
Then we have a for loop. For i in range parentheses 21 colon. So our range is going to be from um, 0 to 21. And i means the index, the first character, the second character, the third, all the way to 20. For i in range 21, print parentheses file.read parentheses 4. So if one character is one byte, and we're doing this in a for loop, and the first print, the first iteration of the loop is going to read four bytes. In this case, it's, it's uh, going to be four characters. So the first time the print command is used, it's going to read four bytes, okay? Then it's go, going to go back up to the 4i and range, and it's going to do it again. So it's going to go from 0 to 4, um, 0, 1, 2, 3. Then it's going to do 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So if we're doing reading this by fours, I'm getting myself confused because the range going from 0 to 3 instead of 4. 4, how many times does 4 go into 21? It goes 5 times. So how many characters would be in each line printed by this code? Oh, I'm sorry, how many characters would be in each line? Four. Four. Four per line. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how many characters total each time print in the loop, but it's only asking me how many characters would be in each line. It would be four. All right, I was overthinking. I didn't pay attention to what that question was actually asking me. All righty. Reading files. After all contents in a file have been read, any attempts to read further from that file will return an empty string because you are trying to read from the end of the file. So we have file equals open parentheses file name dot txt comma r. Um, then we have file dot read, which is going to read everything, the whole thing, not a certain number of bytes, the whole thing. Then we have print. After it reads the whole thing, we're going to print out the string rereading, after which we have the statement print parentheses file.read. Well, after file.read, we read the whole thing. Then we threw a string out that says rereading. Um, then we have print the string finished. Then we close. Any attempts to read further will return an empty string. So the result is we see the string rereading. We do not see anything printed on the line after that, which is the empty string, because there's nothing left to read. After you've read it once, there's nothing left to read in that file. So you have the empty string, which is just a blank line there. And then you have this string finished showing up last. And that's all you see. Rereading, an empty string, and finished. Fill in the blanks to open the file, read its content, and print its length. OK, so let's start off by opening the file in read mode. File equals. You need that keyword open, followed by in parentheses the name of the file, which is file name.txt, a comma, and what mode, which is in read mode, so the string R. Um, we want to read the content next. So on the right hand side of the equal sign, we're going to have file.read, empty parentheses. We're going to assign the value of file.read to the variable called str. 
Then we're going to use the print command, and in parentheses, we're going to use the len statement, which is short for length, because we want to print out the length of the string. Uh, well, the length of the variable str, which is short for string. And after that, after it counts, it counts each one of the characters, it's going to then close by using file.close, empty parentheses. Okay. To retrieve each line in a file, you can use the read lines method to return a list in which each element is a line in the file. For example, file equals open parentheses the string file name dot txt comma the string r. Then we have print parentheses file dot read lines empty parentheses close up the outer parentheses. And then finally, we have file.close, empty parentheses. Here's the result. We have this, again, it's returning a list. And because it's returning a list, it has to be inside of square brackets. And so, in which each element is a line in the file. This is giving you an example. Um, so in the square brackets, you have line 1, text, backslash, n in single quotes, comma, line two text backslash n in single quotes comma line three text in single quotes and line one text line two text and line three text are examples of what the lines of text are it's not literal it's just letting you um, get absorb how it's going to output all right you can also use a for loop to iterate through the lines in the file like this File equals open parentheses the string file name dot txt comma the string r for line in file colon uh, in the for loop we have a single statement which is print parentheses line after that for loop we have the statement file dot close empty parentheses and your result here is line one text a space line two text a space and line three text which I like this result better than the above result the above result gave us a list which is contained in the square brackets and this output is showing you these backslash ends along with line one text line two text line three text I like this output better I just like how it looks better it's easier on the eyes in the output uh, the lines are separated by blank lines as the print fu function automatically adds a new line at the end of its output. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. So we have these two different ways, print file.read lines and for line in file print line. I like this. I like the for loop better. I'd have to practice both of them just to get used to the differences. All right, if the file test.txt has seven lines of content, what will the following expression return? Okay, if it has seven lines of content, if len parentheses open parentheses the string test.txt dot read lines empty parentheses and close the outer parentheses, what will the following expression return? I think it will return 7 because it's using the read lines method. So it's going to read a line at a time. And it's telling us in the story problem that test.txt has 7 lines of content. So if it's going to give us 7, if it's asking us what's the length of the read lines, it should be an output of 7. Yeah. Writing files. To write to files, you use the write method, which writes a string to the file. For example, file equals open parentheses, the string new file.txt, comma, the string w. So we're going to open up something called new file.txt. We're going to open it up in write mode, which is going to rewrite the whole file. Then we have file.write, and in parentheses, we have the string. This has been written to a file. Then we use file.close to close it up. File.close, empty parentheses. 
Then we have file equals open parentheses new file dot text string comma this uh, string r. This time we're opening new file dot text. After we open it, we're going to use the print command to, to print it out onto the screen so you can see it. So print parentheses file dot read empty parentheses and clo uh, close the outer parentheses there in which um, that's when you look down at result, you see the statement, this has been written to a file. Um, because we used file.write to, to put that, this has been written to a file, into new file.txt. When you use file.read, it reads it out. Well, you use file.read, but then you have to use print on the outside of it to, to write it out, to print it out. And again, you use file.close because every time you do something with a file, you should all, when you open it and you do something to it, you should always close it at the end. So the W mode will create the file if it does not already exist. So we use the W to create the file if it doesn't exist. But remember also, W will, will rewrite the file. So if that new file.txt already existed with a poem that you just created, when you use file.write, this has been written to a file, you're going to erase your poem and you're going to replace it with the statement this has been written to a file and you're going to be ticked off if it was a poem that you really put a lot of love into. So you want to use append or something else. You don't want to use file.write if there's something important in there because it will rewrite everything. Okay. Which line of code writes hello world to a file? Which line of code will do this? The last one, file.write. The string hello world. When a file is opened in write mode, the file's existing content is deleted, which I just mentioned. And this is going to show you that. File equals open parentheses, the name of the file as a string, comma, r as a string, which means you're opening it in read mode, then you'll use the print command to print out the string reading initial contents. Okay, then you're going to use the print command again, print parentheses file dot read, uh, empty parentheses and close up the outer parentheses, at which point you're going to print um, the string finished, and then you're going to finish up by closing the file, so file.close, empty parentheses. Okay. Um, then you have. Well, let's look at let's look at the result first, for the first five lines of that code. You get reading initial contents, and then you get some initial text, which we don't know what new file.txt has. Some initial text is just giving you an example that new file.txt has some initial text in it. In which case, whatever that text is will show here. And then after reading it, you will see the output of finished. Okay, so those first three lines of code are all we see out of those first three print commands. Now we're in the middle section, file equals open, parentheses, again, the string new file.txt, comma, this time we're opening it up in write mode. First we read it and printed out a few strings, including um, printing out whatever value new file.txt has, but now we're opening in W mode, which is write, so we're going to totally erase what was in it and, and rewrite new stuff in it. So file equals open parentheses new file.txt string comma w string file dot write here we go we're writing right over it uh, parentheses the string some new text then we use file dot close to close it up file dot close empty parentheses so we don't use a print command anywhere in these three middle lines we just did something different to the file okay now we're going to look at the uh, last five lines we are going to say file equals open parentheses new file.txt string comma r string. So we're going to read this again. Print 
uh, the string reading new contents, print, parentheses, file.read, um, and then print the string finished, and then file.close again. So this time, the last three lines of code, reading new contents, show uh, some new text, and finished. So we, we, we eradicated what was originally a new file.txt and wrote over it with something new. As you can see, the content of the file has been overwritten. What happens if you open a file in write mode and then immediately close it? So you open it in write mode and then close it. Nothing changes. A blank line is written to the file or the file contents are deleted. Hmm. Let's go back. I think if we don't use file.write to put anything in there, I'm going to think nothing changes because we didn't use file.write at all. We just opened it in write mode, but we didn't use the dot write method or function to do anything. I'm going to guess nothing changes. Oh, and I'd be wrong. Uh, hmm. The file contents are deleted? Ooh, that's awful. So if you accidentally open something in write mode, even if you try to immediately close it, you're going to screw yourself because the contents of that file are deleted. So you got to be really, really, really careful if you open anything in W mode. It's not a good idea unless you know you want to completely rewrite a file. Okay, the write method returns the number of bytes written to a file if successful. All right, so we have msg equals the string hello world. File equals open parentheses the string new file.txt comma the string w. Now on the right hand side of the equals assignment statement we have file.write parentheses msg. So we've opened we've opened new file.txt in write mode and we set it we set the value of this to something called file. We use file.write to write hello world by using the msg variable which holds the string hello world. And then we set that, uh, we assign that with a single equal symbol to this variable called amount underscore written. So we wrote over whatever whatever happened to be in new file.txt. We erased it and overwrote it with hello world and we put it into a variable called amount written. Then when we use the print command to print the value of amount written, we are going to be printing out hello world including the space. Um then we have file.close. The result is 12 because the write method returns the number of bytes written to a file. Okay, so instead of, I'm getting kind of confused here. Instead of file.write, Uh, a string where we're writing to it the write method is returning the number of bytes hello is one two three four five world is six seven eight nine ten the exclamation is eleven and the space is twelve 
Okay. All right. If a file operation is successful, which one of these statements will be true? If a file write operation is successful, which one of these statements will be true? File dot write parentheses MSG is equal to MSG or file dot write parentheses MSG is equal to true or file dot write parentheses MSG is equal to the length parentheses MSG. I think what we just did, because the output was 12, the output was not showing the um, hello world, it was showing us 12. That happens to be the length of the variable's value. So I'm going to go with this last one, file.write parentheses MSG equals the length of MSG. Good, we're, we're correct. Working with files. It is good practice to avoid wasting resources by making sure the files are always closed after they have been used. One way of doing this is to use try and finally. So cool. This is a, a little more um, experience with the tries. This doesn't have an accept for um, exception code. It just has a try and a finally. So try colon f equals open parentheses the string file name dot txt then print parentheses f dot read empty parentheses and close the external parentheses and then finally colon f dot close empty parentheses this ensures that the file is always closed even if an error occurs because no, okay, this is cool because we didn't actually have an accept statement here for exception errors. Because we put f.close in the finally, whether there's an exception or not, it's going to close the file. Okay, so good to understand that. Will the close function get called in this code? Well, it's in a finally, so I'm going to say yes, but I'm going to read the whole thing anyway. Uh, try colon f equals open parentheses the string file name dot text then print parentheses f dot read empty parentheses and then close your external parentheses then print parentheses one divided by zero okay you can read by using f dot read you can read file name dot txt and then print the print it out that has no problem but one divided by zero is going to give us a zero division error uh, so print one divided by zero is an error. We've given it we've given it no exception uh, statement here, so it's not going to jump to um, any exception code. Well, it should give us it should give us some type of error anyway. But exception code or not, because we put f dot close in a finally block finally is supposed to run whether there's a problem with the code or not. So I'm going to say yes. Yes, and we're correct. An alternative way of doing this is using with statements. This creates a temporary variable, which is often called f, which is only accessible in the indented block of the with statement. Okay, so let's learn this new way, this new technique with open parentheses file name dot txt string as f so we're opening file name dot txt we're using the f as an alias for that value so then uh, after with open parentheses file name dot txt string as f colon we have print parentheses F dot read empty parentheses and then close the outer parentheses the file is automatically closed at the end of the with statement even if exceptions occur within it and I don't know how to explain why that is I'm just going to try to remember 
that that's how this particular syntax works. With open, file name.txt is f, print, f.read. Because I see no close anywhere, but it's saying that this will automatically, the file will automatically be closed at the end of the with statement. Okay, fill in the blanks to create a valid with statement reading the contents of the file. A valid with statement. So we have to start it off with the keyword with. With open parentheses test.txt string as f, we're going to use f as an alias for the value of this. So with open test.txt string as f colon print f dot read. Yay! All right, ready for a quiz. I hope I remember some of that new stuff. Which number is not printed by this code? Okay, try colon print one. That's going to print. We have no problem there with that line. Print 20 divided by zero. That's not going to print because it's an error. It's going to generate an error. So we're going to ignore print two because we're going to go straight to an error here. We have accept zero division error. That happens to be the error we have a problem with. So we are going to print three because print three is in the exception block. And then we have a finally block, which is always going to execute. We have finally print four. So the number that's not printed by this code is two. It gets skipped over. Open the file in binary write mode. So we have open parentheses the string test.txt, which is, which is the name of the text file, and then comma w for write and b for binary. Fill in the blanks to try to open and read from a file. Print an error message in case of an exception. So we have a try block, try colon. Um, I think this is my with, with open parentheses test.txt string as f colon print parentheses f.read empty parentheses and closing outer parentheses. So that was the try. Then we want an accept statement if there's a problem, except colon, print the string error. Great. What is the highest number that would be printed by this code? Try colon print one. That, that code is great. We're going to see a number one there. Then we are going to use an assertion. Remember, with assertion, it's kind of like the word assume. assume. And we're going to assume a certain statement. If the statement's true, then whatever's, you know, then whatever's underneath it will run. So assert 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. That's a false statement. So we're going to get an assertion error because it's a false statement. The accept assertion error is, it is the exact exception that we're looking for for the previous line of code because that's the problem that we had. And so the that particular exception has print three belong to it. So print three will print. Um, then we have a blanket except statement that will cover any other exceptions. Um, actually, the blanket except statement is for all exceptions. So, this is kind of tricky because I'm starting to wonder if we give it a specific exception and that runs, will it also run the blanket exception? I'm going to guess that it will, and I'll find out right now if I'm wrong. I'm going to think that the blanket except will run no matter what, as long as there is an error. Let's see if I'm wrong. I was wrong. Okay. All right, so what I've just learned is when we give it a specific 
exception. In this case, accept assertion error matches the assert 2 plus 2 equals 5 error. So since it matches that assertion, I mean, it, it matches that exception, it's going to print 3. If there were any additional exception errors in our code, then it would print 4. But we have only one error, and that error matches the assertion error exception. In this case, 3 will be the highest number printed by the code. Okay, good to understand that. And that concludes the exceptions and files tutorial.